I think it's time everyone. Welcome to our very first um, very, our very first live webinar. My name is Dr. Martin Kashara and I'm from the Faculty of Science and Engineering at the University of Wolverhampton and I'm proud to say that I lead our fantastic, fantastic STEM response team from the University of Wolverhampton and our job is to, is to go out into the community, into spaces all over the place and actually show people that science, technology, engineering and maths is just absolutely, totally fantastic. And we do live in unprecedented times, you know, where people can't go outside and things like that because of uh, the coronavirus that circulates in our population. But we didn't want to stop bringing fantastic science, technology, engineering and maths to all the people that we know out there. And all the young learners that we know are probably sitting around their kitchen table right now actually just trying to get their heads around all kinds of science. So what we're going to be doing over the next few weeks, we're going to be attempting at least <laughs> to try and do these live webcasts and there are also going to be some recorded videos and things like that and actually we're just going to keep putting out as much content as we can, not just to keep you occupied maybe, to keep your interest going in science and all that good stuff, but also to help you with your schoolwork that you potentially might be doing at home. And uh, I know there's loads and loads of really good resources that are being spread all over the internet for those people who are learning at home today. So I hope, um, I hope actually anybody who's watching at home, I hope you can hear me. And um, let's talk about the thing that you're actually watching our, um, our webcast on today. This is a fantastic piece of software that we use at the University of Wolverhampton called Panopto. And what it does, it allows me to do a lecture like this, all right, us to have a little bit of a bit of a conversation if you like. Now I can't hear you, all right, but there's a little box that you can see which says, it says discussion posts or something like that. There's a little box for you to write in, uh, often just to the right of left, sorry, of where the sort of video bit is. All right, so what you can actually do is um, type a little question in there. All right, if you can't hear me properly or anything like that, you can type, type that in there. And actually what I can do is I can see your comments then come up on my screen here. All right, and then I can answer any of your questions and I can answer them live and actually everybody else then gets to have the answer. So that's really good. And remember, there's no real stupid questions, right? And if I can answer that question, I certainly would. So this Panopto thing, what it's going to do, you can watch this live right now, all right? And there are some people online I can see already. Um, but you can also watch the video recorded later on on the same link, all right? So all you've got to do is just click that link again and, um, and you can watch the recording of this video. Now, these transmissions are often, they're not going to be that long. Um, and really this is our introductory one and until about three or four minutes ago um, there wasn't going to be a video um, because um, actually the technology was giving up on me like all good technology should right at last minute when you're about to go in front of an audience of people um, but nevertheless we got there and we are recording live now so let me just adjust a few things there we go all right, so we are finding our feet in our little studio here, and this is like the smallest part of the University of Wolverhampton here in my spare room. So this is where I'm going to be doing all of my science from home. And if you want to look at some fantastic science from home on Twitter, there is a hashtag running at the moment called hashtag science from home or science at home. And, um, and we're going to be doing some fantastic things. So over the next few days, you'll see Elise, Heather and Phoebe from the STEM response team as well over the next few weeks all talking to you about their fantastic kinds of science. Now what I wanted to talk to you about today was viruses. At the moment we have the SARS-CoV-2 coronavirus as it's been called circulating in our population. It's making a lot of people quite ill. Some pe most people are getting better but of course it is making some people quite poorly and there's lots of viruses like that if you think about influenza that circulates in our population and makes a lot of people poorly too there are viruses in foreign parts of the world outside the uk 
you know, where, where there's diseases that we don't get here in the UK, that actually we, um, um, if we get them and they're viruses, often transmitted by bitey things like mosquitoes, actually they can cause us lots of harm too. But although out there there are viruses like Ebola, which is much more serious than the coronavirus we've got now, I mean loads and loads more serious, that is a real bad one. But you know these things, they, they're often the exception. And there are viruses out there that they aren't bad, like yellow fever virus or Ebola like I mentioned, that might even do horrible things like make your eyeballs bleed. No. Some of them are absolutely fantastic and they help us every day. They help control populations of other microorganisms, particularly in things like the oceans. They are a fantastic kind of virus that people have been studying since the very early times and, well, since the beginning of the 1900s at least. So what I'd like to do is just talk about them for a minute because you know, we're talking about bad viruses, but what about the good viruses? What about the good viruses? Now, one particular kind of good virus is something called a bacteriophage. Now, a bacteriophage is a virus that actually, well, the name means, it means bacteria eater. It literally gets inside the single-celled organisms, bacteria, and there's lots of different kinds, and it gets inside that bacterial cell and just like a human virus would in a human cell it takes over that cell repurposes all of the cellular machinery that's inside there and actually uses it to turn it into a factory to make new viruses now we're very lucky to have a 3d printer so um, what i've done is i've printed a model of a bacteriophage and this is a particular kind of bacteriophage Okay, you can see that here. Looks very strange, doesn't it? it? Looks a bit like some sort of moon landing craft. And um, these things are fantastic. And this is, a, this is an example of a bacteriophage called a coliphage. We can sometimes call them phages too. And, um, and inside here, and this is inside here, you've got this head, it looks a bit like the place where, where people might sit if it was a moon landing craft. And inside here is the program to make more bacteriophages. This has got the DNA, the deoxyribosnucleic acid, inside a little crystalline structure. This is called a capsid. And this keeps all that information safe. We've got this thing here. This is called the neck of the bacteriophage here. All right. And then we've got these legs. All right. These, these are called tail fibers. And, um, and if, this was a, if this was a very fine model, you could see on the bottom, actually, it would have these little tiny, tiny tail fibers. Now, if you imagine this organism, this very small organism, and it's much, much, much smaller than a bacteria, because viruses can be something like a hundred to a thousand times smaller than the bacterial cell that they actually infect, or the animal cell that they infect, if they're a virus that can infect us. So this bacteriophage, what it would do, it will float around, and often you find these in the oceans, because they're everywhere. In every one milliliter of ocean water, there are a million viruses, mostly of the bacteriophage kind. And uh, they don't all look like this, but this is a really good example. It is called T4 bacteriophage. And actually what it would do, it would land on a bacteria like so. And what it would do, eventually, these legs would stick to the bacterial surface and then the tail would screw down like this and a spike comes out. And it actually injects that bacterial cell, a bit like an alien with its own DNA. And then what happens is that DNA takes over the inside of that bacteria to make new viruses. And in about five minutes, that bacteriophage has taken over that bacterial cell forever. And it's making new bacteriophages. And then what will happen is, after about 20 minutes, th there's just so many bacteriophage in there all the insides of the bacteria have been taken over and turned nearly all into bacteriophages. And then what will happen is, using a special process, that bacteria is burst. And out comes about 300 of these. 
and they go on to infect another bacteria and so on. And that'll keep going, sort of, until there's no bacteria that can be infected left. Sometimes there's bacteria that are resistant to them that can't be infected, but for the most part, it will wipe out a population. Now the good thing is about these things is that not like antibiotics that attack lots of different kinds of bacteria which can make you sick. What it does this time is only attacks bacteria very specifically. So it only might attack one particular kind of bacteria for instance. And actually what will happen then is that those bacteria will be killed but it will leave the other ones and that helps us keep healthy. Now these things that were discovered in about 1915 have been worked on all over the world. And actually, there's a lot of research, and certainly there has been since the, since the 1920s, to use these bacteriophages as a treatment for when we get infected with a bacteria. They're very specific, and there's an almost an infinite number of them. There's somewhere around 10 to the 38 that's 10 with 38 zeros of these little things on this planet. And one day, they could be the secret to conquering antibiotic resistance. So these are useful viruses. They're not nasty like the one we've got now. Well, thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy the rest of these webcasts and the rest of the videos that we put out. Thank you so much for listening. Got any questions? please get in touch with the STEM response team on Twitter, or you can leave questions on this video and I will answer them if I can. So keep safe everybody, bye bye.